Some have said that for women sex is love, and for men sex is not love. What is your advice for the different ways that men and women approach romance, bonding and sexuality? Regardless of gender, the most important thing when it comes to sexuality and intimacy is your intention. Is your intention just for your own pleasure? Or is your intention for a deeper connection? Sexuality is something that activates you in such a way that your body is aligned to bond with the other through the sexual act. However, the issue is that your bonds become toxic because of your trauma or that your bonds are fickle because your intentions are not reflective of holistic unity. And this is the source of many problems. Is there a difference between the way men and women relate to sexuality? Absolutely. Though, it is important, first of all, to know that the core of intention is what is most important. Men can tend to want to spread their seed as much as possible, whereas women want to hold on to the mate, to keep the offspring well. And even if somebody is not inclined to heterosexual activities, these tendencies still exist to some degree. And knowing this core difference between men and women can help very much. Knowing that men may always feel some levels of this temptation, and you can intend to hold back those temptations and keep a monogamous relationship, and that can be well and good. Sometimes women will get very concerned that a man can't keep his eyes off another woman. And this jealousy itself can cause issues, as it may be a lack of understanding. Whereas men can strive to become more independent than is helpful for the relationship. And men generally fail to understand the deeper needs of women. Okay, so is monogamy ideal or just an option? Many different relationships are possible. That isn't to say that the deep monogamous bond is the only relationship that serves. What matters is how you communicate your intention and relationships that meet based upon similar intentions can be a way for souls to explore and get to know themselves, which is, after all, your purpose for being here. So we don't see anything wrong with exploring many different relationship styles. The key is being clear about your intentions and being open about sharing them. And if intentions match, yes, many different types of relationships are possible. What is your advice to adolescent girls and young women on finding sex and love? What is your advice to adolescent boys and young men on finding love and sex? Adolescent is a time where hormones might be raging and children are influenced very much by the culture that informs them with all the media and entertainment they consume. And this gives both girls and boys and queer people of all sorts a challenge in relating. They must break past all of the preconceived notions of what these relationships ought to be and especially those that are informed by things like pornography.
young girls need to understand that many young men are influenced by this pornography and that it is okay to set boundaries and set limits to not succumb to pressure to perform sexually in ways that don't really call to them to be able to know what a yes and a no is and let it be okay to not choose to do something with one of their partners Young boys need to learn how to respect this consent and to not see sex as some goal, but as a process. Knowing that this process is the most enjoyable when everyone involved fully enjoys the experience. Sometimes young boys will play out these ideas from porn and attempt to push past limits before they even know how to go through the basics. So we would encourage these younger people to explore the idea of a beginner's mind, open to knowing that they don't necessarily know and that everything that they were taught sexuality is might not be true. Sexuality ought to be experienced at a pure sensational level in the moment, bringing your full awareness into your body and your connection with the other person. Some talk of losing their virginity, as though it has no value. Others choose to save intimacy for a lifelong bond, but then feel unsatisfied. As sexual experiences may have deep echoes later, what is your advice? To lose your virginity need not be a goal for younger people, though we understand that there is great excitement in exploring this. The first experience ought to be a very good one, we'll say. There's no need for it to lead to a committed relationship. In some senses, that can take away the spontaneity that is part of the spark of romance. We would say that those who attempt to limit sexuality up until the point of this deep commitment are not fully allowing themselves to explore this spontaneous side of life. And this is an act that many controlling religions impose upon their members. So we would say, be free. Be free about it. But, yes, know that when you have sex with another person, even when you kiss them and exchange saliva, there's an exchange of energy, and some of their energy comes into your being. Their emotions, their thoughts, their feelings and desires all move through your mind and body for a period of time. How long is very situational, though the intensity of the experience leaves a deeper impact. And so it's important to be aware of the energy that you take on. And this is why we speak of intentions, first of all, knowing that if the interaction fulfilled your intentions and didn't push you past your boundaries and lead you to feel uncomfortable, it was a great connection. Though, if something about that connection didn't sit well with you and you were uncomfortable in some way, know that that energy can stick with you as well. And the energy of other people can stick with you for some time. So be discerning, be careful. And know that, yes, the sexual act does have far-reaching effect, even if it is sometimes done in such a short time. That energy does stay with you. 
more and more teenagers change gender, and then some regret this later in life. Others live and love in truly new and unique ways without gender surgery. What is your advice? Well, we would say that, yes, there are many who do transition in adolescence and then transition back. So this is only a concern that there should be greater awareness and a deeper trial period before unalterable changes are made to the bodies of such young ones. At a certain point in around 19 or the early 20s, one stops wavering so much in their true feeling about who they are. And yes, most past this age will not regret their choice to transition. Whether or not somebody transitions, using hormones and surgeries or not, is a personal choice. Surgeries do change the natural flow of energy in the body, and for some people, this might mean reduced pleasure and sensation. Yet, if that is something one is willing to sacrifice, for feeling more aligned with who they are, that is their choice. And that can be a great choice. It can also be a choice that some have made simply due to peer pressure and wanting to fit in with their groups. And some have regretted the choice to have these surgeries even though they remain transgender. So this is also something important to consider. There's nothing we consider wrong with doing any of these things. There are simply some choices that are difficult to reverse in this incarnation. And those choices ought to be considered at a deeper level. That's all we are saying. We know that there are many, especially of the older generations, who are not trusting of trans people, and we want to dispel those fears and remind you that trans people have existed in so many indigenous cultures, and they've always been a part of your world. Open yourself to the full breadth of human capacity. Gender is much more varied and different from your assumptions that operate in the present consensus reality of your world. On the spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you both hear us coming a whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok just behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark. 